We're just one week away from the NFL draft, and it is silly season. There are plenty of rumors and things that we're going to pay attention to and track over the next week here at Cincinnati Bengals Talk, but who knows what to believe? The crazy part about this is whether you're Team Sewell, Team Chase, maybe your Team Pitts or Team Trade Down, it feels like the Bengals have a lot of right options and not really a wrong one. I'm Team Chase. At the same time, I see the logic behind taking Sewell, who you would assume is the number one tackle on the Bengals board, number one offensive lineman on the board. Same goes for Pitts, right at tight end. The same thing goes for Chase. In a trade back, I wouldn't love it, but I get the idea of adding more capital. And yet, what's funny about this is I'm extremely open-minded about it, and I think most people that are are well-versed in Bengals draft their options, at least, Uh, that the Bengals have with the fifth pick, they feel the same way. But Mike Tannenbaum of ESPN, a former NFL GM, isn't. He's strictly offensive tackle. In fact, he thinks the Bengals should be kicked out of the league if they don't take Penny Sewell. If the Cincinnati Bengals don't draft an offensive tackle, they should be disbanded and revoked from the NFL. Last year, last year, this is remarkable, guys. Joe Burrow threw the ball 450 times in 10 games unacceptable. They cannot go out on the field this year unless they draft an offensive tackle, Panay Sewell, with the fifth pick. I don't care if it's the U.S. Olympic track team out there, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, if they trade for him, I don't care. They got to keep this guy upright and healthy. It was irresponsible what they did last year. They should have been more two back, uh, offensive sets, two tight ends. They should have protected Joe Burrow. It was irresponsible, and it bothers me when people say, oh, just get him another weapon. Oh, how many games would he play this year? He played 10 last year. You want him playing six or four? <laughs> it's a former NFL GM. Kick him out of the league if they don't take the guy that's going to keep Joe Burrow upright. Oh, my gosh. Let's start there, the first five seconds. What an absolute ridiculous comment to make. And I get it. It's a little shock value Absolutely ridiculous because Jamar Chase might be the better prospect. It's reasonable to think that. Kyle Pitts might be the better prospect. It's also reasonable to think that. And so I'm never going to criticize the Bengals for taking a player that also addresses a need and wide receiver absolutely a need. The Bengals played with three wide receivers 82% of the time last year. 82%. Well, they lost AJ Green, John Ross, Alex Erickson, really banking on. Odd and Tate to, to play 82% of the offensive snaps. So wide receivers are neat. Do you take Kyle Pitts? We have a game-changing tight end. I don't think Drew Sample is that or, or CJ Uzama is that. So this idea that those guys don't fill a need is ridiculous. So yes, the Bengals are in a good spot. But the fact that Tannenbaum with his fear tactics, protecting Joe Burrow and oh my God, he got hurt and only played 10 games. What's he going to play? Six or four? Oh my God. This is how. GMs become former GMs. And Mike's certainly much more qualified to talk about front offices and NFL stuff than I am. But the reality is, is you have to look at the draft as a GM, as an NFL front office in its entirety. What do the Bengals need? Where is the talent at? And how can they maximize the talent in this draft with those eight picks? And to me, it's been obvious the whole time. Jamar Chase. I'm not finding a Jamar Chase in round two or round three or anything close or round four. You know what I can find? Starting offensive linemen, starting tackles, tackles that can develop into good, maybe even great offensive linemen. Going to be hard to find that game changing, game breaking outside wide receiver that stretches the field for Joe Burrow in rounds two to four. It just is. And some might say Kadarius Tony, there's a lot of concerns with him. And I don't think he's going to be there at 38. Diami Brown, I like him a lot. Sort of a one-trick pony at UNC. Had some drop issues. And are you really taking him at 38? I also don't think he's going to be there at 69 in round three. That's a dilemma. You're really going to reach? Jamar Chase isn't a reach at five. And I think there are going to be plenty of good offensive linemen there. And that's the thing here. Do not let these national talking heads brainwash you. Don't let it happen. This is why Cincinnati Bengals Talk exists and allbengals.com exists and the Locked on Bengals podcast exists because we want to make sure that you're informed. I'm not knocking you if you're Team Sewell, by the way. I get the logic. Hey, the Bengals offensive line has sucked for years now, a half a decade, and I've covered all but one of those years. 
And I understand the frustration there. And now they're in place to potentially get a second tackle to go along with Jonah Williams in the first round. And you, you feel really good about bookend tackles. I get the idea. I get the logic. At the same time, the drop-off at receiver for what the Bengals need. They don't need a slack guy. They, also, they, they already have Tyler Boyd. They don't need a Z receiver in T. Higgins, who's going to be this big possession contested catch guy. They need a downfield threat. And that is what Jamar Chase is. He's familiar with Burrow. He ran a 4-3-4 40-yard dash. Not a 4-3-8, by the way. 4-3-4 was the official time uh, when I, I checked in on that from LSU's Pro Day. The kid can fly. He just turned 21 in March. He's extremely strong, extremely physical, weighs 200 pounds, did 23 reps on the bench press. Sewell did 30. I mean, that's pretty damn close when you're talking about that. And I'm not saying he's as strong as Sewell. I'm just saying he's a freak at wide receiver. And so to me, this idea that it's got to be Sewell, it's got to be Sewell, it's got to be, that's asinine. That's completely ridiculous. And you're never going to get that. By the way, you don't hear me saying it's got to be Chase. That's who I would take. If the Bengals hired me today to be GM, and by the way, I would continue this channel. It would be fun. Bengals GM talks. This would be really fun here on Cincinnati Bengals talk. If that happened, guess what? Jamar Chase would be the pick if he was available at five, barring something really unforeseen, right? And, and, and that's the thing for me, is if you take Chase, you might be getting the next Julio Jones. You really might. Like, that's what he kind of looks like. A big, physical, strong, tough. And now he's not as tall as Julio, but he's everything else. And he can jump 41-inch vertical. So to me, if you do that, and then you double down or maybe triple down on offensive line throughout this draft, you have eight picks. You're going to find a starter at 38. Maybe you go defense in round three, round four. You find a, a fringe starter slash backup, depending on what you need in year one. And then in year two, he develops into a starter. And boom, you also can get another developmental player later in the draft. And, and that's the thing here. To me, that's what's missing. If the Bengals don't draft Penny Sewell, I promise you, they can still, and there's still a very likely path that they can keep Joe Burrow upright in 2021. I'm acknowledging they need to fix the offensive line. Do not get it twisted here. I know it's an issue. I know it's a big problem and they can solve it. Is that all you want them to do? Is that it? Because if your goal for this offseason was just that, then they can do that by taking Sewell. You're right. Riley Reef, Sewell, they re-signed uh, a couple of guys. You got Xavier Suofilo, Quentin Spain in the mix. Trey Hopkins comes back, obviously Jonah Williams. Yeah, they can have a better offensive line. What happens when the receivers don't get open downfield? What happens when Tyler Boyd gets double teamed and T. Higgins doesn't get a ton of separation and they take a, who exactly? Third round receiver that isn't ready yet. Fourth rounder that's got speed, but kind of a one trick pony. Diami Brown from North Carolina, you reach on him a bit. No, I want to do both. I want to give Joe Burrow a premier weapon that he's dominated the best college football players on the planet. A lot of NFLers, by the way, went up against that Burrow-Chase combo. And guess what? They could not stop them. And I'm talking about Patrick Sertain is going to be a top 15 pick for sure. You're talking about different cornerbacks that are already in the league now. These guys roasted them. And so you get him on one side, you get T. Higgins on the other, Tyler Boyd in the slot, mix it in the backfield, and then say it with me here. You add offensive linemen in rounds two through, say, five, because there's going to be some fallers. And, you know, maybe it's a Walker Little who falls because of some of his medical concerns. Take a swing on him. Maybe it's a Landon Dickerson who falls because of some medical concerns. Take a swing on him. And I'm not saying bank on those guys to start. No, no, no. You could take a Liam Eikenberg, a Dylan Radins uh, from North Dakota State or Radins. I always get it wrong. Uh, one of those guys, right, could be there. Alex Leatherwood could be there. I would really like that. That's kind of a dream at 38 for me because a lot of those guys, you know, Tevin Jenkins, I don't think is going to be there. I think that's kind of um, wishful thinking, so to speak. Sam Cosme, th same thing. But the point is, is there's options. Heck, even the University of Cincinnati's own James Hudson, I like him. Banks out of Notre Dame. I like them. You can find upgrades at guard. You can find upgrades at tackle in this draft after the first round. So what do you want? Do you just want to protect Burrow? 
or do you want to protect Burrow and also give him a game-changing weapon? Because that's what I want to do. That's why I'm on Team Chase. Some may say it's a risk. A lot of things in life are risky. But when I look at the path to doing both, because they focus so damn much on defense and free agency. I want to do both. Give him weapons, give him offensive line, and the path is easier with Chase at five. Let me know what you think. As always, I appreciate you watching. This is just the first of many pre-draft videos coming over the next week. And man, oh man, hopefully Mike Tannenbaum sees this because guess what? The Bengals take Chase. They're not going anywhere. And in fact, the only place they might be going is the playoffs in the near future. Until next time, thank you so much for watching.